And these are some tips for BGCSE keyboarding skills, part two. This will be the last part. If you want to see the previous part, I will leave a link in the description box below so that you can go back and see what was on the first video. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to deal with in the second video is letters. We dealt at length in the first video about letters, but what I did was I got some exact instructions word for word from the BGCSE paper itself. So I hope that if you see these questions, it will help you to figure out or to better prepare for the examination. So I'm using the paper two from the year 2007, the BGCSE paper work for keyboard skills, BGCSE paper for keyboard skills. Okay, so the instructions say, input or key in the following two page letter on letterhead found in the rear of the examination booklet. I have highlighted in colors the things that I would like for you to look for, certain key tips or instructions that I would like for you to look for um, when you're looking at the letter. So the first thing you need to make sure is that there's a letterhead found in the rear of the examination book on the rare chance or the off chance that it's actually not in your examination booklet. I need to let your invigilator know. The next thing that I want you to look for is special, special delivery. Special delivery is a mailing notation which means that you should have a special part for it in your letter as stated here by the term airmail, you would replace airmail with special delivery. So after you put your address and the date, you would put airmail and then the receiver's information. And then you would continue to type in the body of your letter. And let's go back to the first slide. So um, it says that to the attention of Mr. Trevor Delavoe, so you want to refer to task five for the address because Mr. Delavo is going to be your receiver. He's going to be the sender, um, the receiver, the person that you're sending the letter to. So you will have to scroll through, this is task one, you'll have to scroll, flip through your BGCSE booklet and look for task five so that you can find the address and use that um, same address for task one. Also use the subject heading Bahamas Seafood, Seafood Festival. So here where you see subject or sometimes they'll put RE the subject and then you will put the subject as stated in the first slide which says Bahamas Seafood Festival. So where you see FG program, you would put Bahamas Seafood Festival. So that would be the subject mm -hmm. heading. Okay, you can pause and fast forward or rewind as many times as you want to get it. If I'm not, if I flip in through the slides too quickly or whatever. And then as mentioned in the first video, they will tell you whether they want modified block they, or block format. They'll tell you if they want open punctuation or mixed punctuation. They're gonna tell you if they want block paragraphs or indented paragraphs, or so sometimes they won't say anything at all about paragraphs. But if they state indented paragraphs and you put block paragraphs, you're going to lose points. In this document, they require for you to insert a table. So they want you to make sure that the table itself is blocked. So the blocked table should start on the left hand side of the letter, okay? It should not be centered. Make sure that it is aligned left. Blocked anything means start at the left hand margin. Okay, you're gonna put a suitable salutation and address in the letter and then you're gonna address the envelope for mailing. And you're also gonna put a suitable um, address and all that stuff for the receiver's address, sender's address, and don't forget your special delivery mailing notation. You could lose points to that. Make sure that the mailing notation is in your letter as, here, as seen here on your letter body the letter itself and make sure that your mailing notation is also on the envelope and then they want for you to send a copy 
to Miss Linda Pyform. Miss Linda Pyform is um, someone that you're going to CC. So at the bottom of your letter, you're going to, oops, sorry. At the bottom of your letter, you're going to put carbon copy or courtesy copy. You know, you're going to put CC. I don't know why this is, so sorry. You're going to put CC and then the lady's name. And the lady's name is Miss Linda Pyform. Okay. And it has all of her other information at the bottom. So you're going to photocopy, send the photocopy to her, and this is all of her information that you're going to send it to when you send it to her. So she is not the intended receiver. Sometimes they'll do this. They won't put the um, receiver's address or information on the letter. They'll send you somewhere else as they're doing with this task. They're sending you to task five, the itinerary, and then they're gonna put something tricky like Miss Linda Pie form when they don't want you to send it to her, but they just actually want you to carbon copy it to her. So beware. A letter again for you to review. This is a nice example that shows you the different parts of the letter, reference initials, CC, carbon copy, all the different parts of the letter that you'll probably need to use. And some parts are missing like, you know, the sender's address, but if you have a, um, a header, a letterhead in the letter, as is stated here, the letterhead found in the rear of the examination booklet, you won't need to put in your information because the letterhead will already be there. And this is how your special delivery mailing annotation would look on your envelope. So you'll have your address, uh, sorry, the sender's address, the receiver's address, the stamp, and then the special annotation, the mailing notation, special delivery will be on the envelope in a space that is not being used in particular, often to the left-hand margin, to the middle or bottom on that side. So you, if you put it there, you should be good to go. All right, box table example of instructions for a box table um, in task two. In task two of the 2007 BCSE paper, they ask you to um, key a table. So they'll have the table for you to see on the shorter side. When you see the term shorter side, that's a tricky way of them telling you landscape. They want you to use landscape. Sometimes they'll say landscape or portrait, but sometimes they'll use words like shorter side. If you see shorter side, that means key the box table in a landscape format. Okay, and then they want you to set the top and the bottom margin at half of an inch and the side margins at one inch and use the main heading schedule of events and the secondary heading grant great Bahamian seafood festival. So make sure that you pay attention to that and the spacing double space after the secondary heading and they want you to center all headings. Okay. So pay attention, these are things. I'm highlighting them so that you can see that it's not just one thing you need to do. If you look at the colors, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six in different instructions that they're giving you for this one question. So those six instructions, probably six points alone, six points, at least six points, it could be more. But pay attention to your instructions because they're very important. All right, so another task, task three from the 2007 BGCS examination. The instructions say input or key into the following booklet using the full sheet of paper provided at the rear of the examination booklet. So you will have leaflets in the booklet that will be perforated and you will have to tear them up because that's what you're going to print on. If you were typing on a typewriter, that's what you would type on. But since we're printing from the computer, that's going to be what we're going to use as our printing paper. So the booklet is to be in a landscape layout. 
So they're telling you out right here, not the short, not the shorter side, like they mentioned here, they're telling you here, landscape layout, and they want you to divide the page in two. Now divide the page in two is something that basically they want you to put two of the documents in two columns. Now in the word processing, in any word processing software that you use, and we know the one that we're using, the layout tab, you'll go to the layout tab, columns, and choose two for this particular exercise. You can choose two because they need two columns because it's you have one, two, and three for default settings. Or if you wanna make sure that you type it in yourself, you can go all the way to the bottom where it says more columns at the drop down menu and you can select more columns and then you can type in the number of columns that you wanna have on your paper. So on the next slide, I've actually prepared a visual demonstration for you guys to see. So you will go to this layout tab here at the top. You'll go to the layout tab and then, sorry, just a minute. You'll go to the layout tab here. And then you'll go to columns and then you'll go to two for this exercise or you can just go to the bottom where it says more columns and then once the column once that menu comes up then you can put in how many columns you want click enter and it will prepare it for you by the page in two okay so next is task four i'm using the entire bgcs here because i want you guys to get a full perspective of what to anticipate. Okay, so on the BGCSE paper two, the example of instructions for a form, this is an example of instructions for a um, form. This is again paper two, um, paper two from 2007. Input or key in the form below on a full sheet of plain paper provided at the rear of the examination booklet. So they're sending you back to the booklet. So you've got to get those perforated sheets of paper. Those are what you're going to use to type on or print on. Okay, the margins here are going to be one inch top, one inch left, one inch right. They said nothing above the bottom. But as a rule, just for safety, as a precaution, you, if they don't state what the margins are, you want to have at least a one inch margin at the bottom. And especially if top left and right are one inch, try to make it uniform all around. And then they give some additional instructions for the form. Use single spacing, remember SS, single spacing, on the nomination deadline section. So once you look at the task, you'll see the nomination deadline section. So itinerary now, which is task five. This is the task that you're actually supposed to be referring to from task one to get the address for the receiver. Itinerary, these are some examples of the instructions for the itinerary. On a full sheet of paper, input or key in the following itinerary. So to the best of your abilities, you look at how the itinerary is formatted and you're gonna follow that format and type it out to the best of your ability with, they only give you one particular instructions, one inch top and equal side margins. So the top of your mark, the top margin has to be one inch. Now they're saying, based on how you type if you decide to use half of an inch to make sure that all of your information fits across the page make sure that you have half of an inch on the left and right margins okay they don't stay outright but if they say this it probably means that you're not going to be able to get the one inch margin left or right so if you do half of an inch left right make sure they're equal, okay? Make sure you put that information in, or if you're using a typewriter, make sure you um, put that in. But the instructions in this video are mainly for people who are using computers and a word processing software. Okay, so these are just some general instructions to you. In the previous video, I mentioned that I would go over some of the displays and the different things that they have, but I'm not going to do that because in the two videos that I've posted, I've given you some basic information for typing. 
And some of you may see some documents on the exam that you probably have never seen before. I do not want you to panic. Do not panic. With your knowledge of the basics, such as spacing, tab, or using tab, or the space bar, center align, left align, bold, um, underline, landscape portrait, the different types of spacing, um, how to put a line, shift plus underline, or you can press the underline um, icon and just tab across until you get the length of the line that you want. You can insert columns as I previously showed you in this video. You can insert tables as previously shown you in the first video. You know how to put caps. There should be nothing that you can't type. And if there is something that you can't type, do your best to try to figure it out. Typing is a very flexible subject especially since they don't give you direct instructions for everything. So try your best, do your best, and um, you should be good to go. Okay, that's going to be all for now. That's all I have to share for the video.